Welcome back to another end of the year edition of the Curse Checkpoint from HorribleNight.com. I'm Justin Lacey. It is Thursday night, December 19th, 2013. Coming at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. Here to get caught up with one Justin Gifford. See where his head's at heading into the games of the year. But before that, how the hell has life been treating you, Mr. Gifford? Uh, well, so you work in tech, and I have no idea if this is similar with you guys, but our end of the year is crazy because mm-hmm. we're trying to get all of our deals and everything done. Um, and since I write all of our contracts... <laughs> um, yeah, I see where that's going. I, I walked out of the office with... Uh, this is going to be worthless if you're not watching this tomorrow, but I walked out of the office the other day with this expression on my face. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's been it's been crazy, but had, um, good. People that actually, you know, want to read stuff on HorribleNight.com may have noticed uh, I've been uh, I've been incredibly busy the last couple weeks, um, and it's kind of affected the site content. Apologize for that, uh, but we're also kind of just winding up things. And but yeah, my end of the year is usually pretty nuts, and uh, but things. Uh, kind of lighten up here in in January February, but um, as that all that work stuff, have you been able to vent with uh, I don't know, uh, watching some some movies, some reading, taking in some media of any any other kind other than the the game variety? Uh, yeah, definitely. A friend of mine had just done a giant stream of Battlestar Galactica, which I had never watched. I'd watched like two episodes when it was still on TV and uh, hadn't been a real big fan. It was pretty dark. I wasn't crazy about it. And uh, then I was like, okay, you know what? I'll give it a shot. And I started watching it. Uh, The acting is really good. They do some kind of fun stuff talking about um, governance. And the story is fun. Um, I think that they really should have had like a writing credit for the Old Testament because (laughs) good Lord – like it's the entire Old Testament. Just you just ripped it off and put it in space. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that um, I'm finally caught up on Graham, which I'm a big fan of, which is yeah. sort of in line with. I know you're watching um, Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow, yeah. I like. I wondered how many of these shows network TV can support, but I can. I can definitely understand like the. Uh, I don't know necessarily why Sleepy Hollow hit home for me and Grim missed, but um, I can totally, you know, if you get it, it's it's good fun TV. Yeah, and then um, let's see. Other than that, um, haven't really been really watching a lot of movies. I watched uh, Man of Steel the other day. Um, I forget. Enjoyed what you're, it. You're you're a Superman fan, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm a Superman yeah. fan. Yeah. Um, I mean, not versus Batman, but versus anybody okay. else. Okay. Uh, it's sort of like Purdue. I, I like them as long <laughs> as you're not playing IU. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Um, and then I sort of had the realization on, I don't know, Sunday night or something, I was had a bunch of DVR'd stuff, and I got to watch Arrow back-to-back with uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and I was like, holy crap, I'm watching two well-done, strongly-backed, popular shows and they're both comic book shows this is awesome i've heard good things about arrow watched a couple of the episodes liked it but he did dive a bit deeper um so but yeah i fell off of agents of shield agents of shield and has it gotten gotten better is it about the same as it was and you just enjoy it or it's probably i i don't like it as well as arrow um and it has nothing to do with the marvel uh DC thing. Sure. I, it, it's a little goofy. Um, like, I enjoy it, but there's a level of sort of goofiness to it that I'm not crazy about that I don't really feel is present in the Marvel verse in the theater. Okay. Or it's at least tempered with some grittiness. This is, uh, I, I like it, but there's kind of a goofy is the, the best thing, I, best way I can describe it. Sure. No, I don't know. There's something about all the. You know the network shows versus the cable shows I've been watching. That you know, um, I think you do. You watch Castle at all? Castle is one of the shows I wish I watched, okay. but like I because I like Nathan Fillion. Yeah, sometimes I just like those network shows for kind of you know campy fun, just like um, 
yeah. I don't know, we've been re we've been rewatching Dexter recently, and I just um, I love that show, but it's so self serious and like that kind of stuff just doesn't happen. Like you need that balance of some of the I don't know the crappier network TV. So um, yeah, we um, I've been waiting for this for a while, but. Um, we just watched Blackfish. It's uh, free on Netflix now. Um, yeah, the orcas and SeaWorld and the SeaWorld killer whale helicopters and yeah. And um, that was really interesting. Like if um, I forget what was going on, but like um, shit, there's another news story. But anyway, um, my fiance and I were both talking about that movie to friends and kind of got getting accused of being tree, tree huggers because we were. Essentially, you know, shut down SeaWorld because it really does, you know, it, it, it paints a very, um, he, they hunt, <laughs> they yeah. hunt and separate the orcas from, from their pods with helicopters. It's not cool. Yeah. And, oh, and then it just goes, it goes into just like, um, you know, how smart the killer whales are and how emotional they are. And it's just a really, really well done documentary and, um, you know, goes into some of the cover ups and, and, uh, the, the PR spin that SeaWorld has done because it, the whole story centers around a singular incident where a trainer was killed by one of the whales. And then you kind of come to find out this whale's killed a couple different people. And this isn't like, and they still continue to kind of cover it up. And it's kind of disturbing as you get deeper and deeper into it. But also just to really, I don't know, intriguing watch. I went to SeaWorld probably when I was eight or 10 years old and, um, uh, they kind of mentioned towards the end of it that, you know, maybe 20, 30 years from now, we'll look back on, back on things like SeaWorld as really barbaric, almost like they kind of, I want to say they drew a comparison to like gladiatorial combat, that type of thing. And it was just, yeah, it was kind of weird just to see also just, you know, SeaWorld at its peak in the, in the eighties and nineties, just, um, you know, how, how much it was kind of caught up in those decades. And it does seem, uh, really out of date today. And, uh, I don't know. It just—it's uh, a really interesting documentary. No matter where you kind of fall. Well, I mean, they're thirty-ton um, wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they kind of are. So, uh, yeah, I, I have not seen it, but I've uh, read a couple articles about it, and I definitely know which camp I come down on. Sure. So, um, what else have we been watching? Been catching up on Dexter. And then everything, all the other shows are they kind of wrapped up. So, um, getting really excited for uh, Justified. It's coming back here in the next month yeah. or so. And then um, uh, I need to find a couple more shows. Those kind of like I forgot how heavy my ch- fall rotation actually is. So, have you seen any of the previews for Helix? No, what's Helix on Sci-Fi? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not real clear. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there, it's. It's clearly scary. I think there may be some sort of zombie-esque things to it, but they're doing genetic experiments, and it's some lab under the ground, and uh, now you pretty much know everything I know from the previews. But some of the early spots were really creepy, where it was just like this white lab room and like some guy in a... um, a Clearly dead, but he's in like, you know, the the, um, level 5 hazmat suit, and uh, that was that was pretty much it. There was just like a watch ticking, and then you see hmm. two eyes in the vent. So interesting. I haven't been watching. Yeah, it, it looks kind of cool. I haven't been watching the sci-fi stuff. Did you did you get through Defiance the show? Yeah, I did. Okay, you. I, I thought you were a fan of it. Yeah, I like the show better than the game. Okay, <laughs> what are the games hold up these days? I saw I saw its expansion on sale during the Steam sale. So. Uh, I didn't even realize there was an expansion. I mean, I, I gave it a, a solid go this summer. Yeah. Um, but. Yep. 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 It's, it was an MMO, and three years I never ago, really three years ago it would have been awesome. Yeah. So it, it was fine. It was okay. That's kind of video game stuff. Um, before we get into what you've been playing and what kind of stood out to you this year headlines of the industry um you and i tend to shoot articles back at least weekly trying to find some sort of article fodder for you and then me just shooting whatever else catches my attention but uh as far as what's been kind of buzzing around uh the industry in the last month or so what kind of stuck out to you oh man um 
there's I have to pull this one up on my uh, phone because I pulled it up earlier. But the the okay, so I got Battlefield Four and I've been mm-hmm. playing it with some success. And I was trying to figure out what the hell the problem was with, you know, it was like booting me out of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was some stability problems, and I was having trouble connecting to servers. And you know, this is supposed to be like EA's answer to uh, Modern Warfare. And it just was not, it's not been a great experience. And then I start looking this up and EA, somebody's going to, they're trying to get certified as a class to sue EA for uh, their executives dumping off a bunch of their stock right before the game was released. Seriously? Broken. I didn't realize that side yeah. of the story. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, let's see. They, the executives uh, sold... Um, in violation of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, they sold roughly five million dollars worth of shares when it was at the, its their peak, right before they released Battlefield 4, and it was broken. Holy shit! Like I actually like I've only been kind of browsing those headlines and fo- following the story about how broken the game is, and I wasn't really it really wasn't adding up without looking at the details as far as like so how are shareholders suing them over the quality of the game? Like, I thought it was more getting into a, you release an unfinished product and, um, you know, our profits aren't as uh, big as they should be because you, you know, falsely led the consumers or something along that line. But apparently... No, they, they just pumped up, they pumped up the game and said how awesome it was. And the executives, you know, they've got stock options or whatever, and then they sell all the stock options off right before Damn. Uh, they released the game and the stock tanks. Damn. So. Uh, that one kind of blew me away. Yeah, that's uh, um, that was that was the big one I, I read about recently. So I don't know. Yeah, EA man, like so, you know they're notorious for winning the the dumbass award as far as the uh, what worst company in America is it a worst company in the world, right? Uh, I think it was worst company in America, but Be- because you know making video games that anger people is the biggest travesty in all of business um, compared to... But anyway, um, so they, they've they actually, like, since they got their new CEO, he's been trying to um, try to paint a friendlier image for the company, which has um, made them actually issue, like, apologies for... Uh, actually, they kind of apologize for the quality of Battlefield a little bit later, but, like, even... When they released the new NBA Live, they apologized for the quality of that and just trying to, like, at least put some sort of personal uh, front on, on on some of their business practices. But they keep releasing – this year more than any, they've released, like, broken, unfinished you – go, go, you go back to SimCity, just games with yeah. a lot of problems, and it has not been a good year for them, and um, just – Battlefield 4 wasn't ready, and – they still, I don't know. It's it's. They pushed it out. Th- well, didn't didn't NBA Live get uh, one star on Giant Bomb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I wanted to make sure. Like I didn't. I just like glanced at it and then closed the window. And, uh, and was this like, was oh, their. Was I think their first release in that series for at least three, if not four years. So, um, it's basically a foundational game that is barely playable. Um, you know, it wasn't. Um, I don't think anybody really had high hopes for that game. That's the difference between that and the Battlefield story. But yeah, but man, like I don't something something is messed up with their. They just can't hit their yearly release cycles. Kind of like um, you know, say what you will about Activision and Ubisoft, but they've at least they've got their production pipeline figured out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I mean, it's troubling. That one, that one uh, really jumped out at me. Um, so I know we're going to get into the uh, Xbox One mm-hmm. in a little bit, um, but some of the other articles, you know, I was almost ready to swap over to the PlayStation 4 yeah. from the reviews of the Xbox One. I was just like, and I just turned it on because I said its name. <laughs> um, awesome. <laughs> so anyway, I, you know, I was about ready to swap because I'm like, man, these reviews are not sounding good. This isn't good. Um but I went ahead and got it, um, and I don't know if it was the uh, system update that I had to download or whether 
all of the reviewers from all of the sites ate a lot of paint chips or what, but... I still don't know which way you're going to go with this yet, so... I'm the reviews anxious. were hugely overly harsh. Okay. So I've got to assume that they had a vastly different system or something, because one thing that kept popping up was, oh, I can't figure out the voice commands. If you don't say anything for a minute, it brings up a menu, and it highlights the words all of the voice, say. the words you can say on the screen, and it's kind of like... I'm sorry, what What do you mean you don't understand how this works? <laughs> I, like, I I don't know. So uh, I think that some of the reviews on that were either hugely overly harsh or they fixed a lot between the uh, reviews right at release um, where people had pre-release uh, sure. or preview copies and when consumers got their hands on them. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Yeah, I don't know. I kind of stayed away from a lot of the console reviews. Just one, I'd made up my mind as a consumer, and I also know I'm going to get both. Um, yeah. And two, just the concept of there was just something really weird about just we're going to review this console and we're going to give it a score. Like, first week of its release, I was like, you know, this is like, other than it just getting out the door, that's the that's the, that's the milestone that these things shipped it all. And they shipped enough to sell two million consoles a piece and um yeah that's the feat I, like these consoles will be unrecognizable in three to four years so like i don't really care too much um you know as long as you're not red ringing on day one and um my, yeah. my bar is kind of low for well. you can't really judge this thing and it and it works and uh, so you know when i kind of took in the rev- reviews it's just like you could, I did see a lot of bias. Like you could tell right away where mm. the review was going, but I thought it was kind of split as far as um, you know. You had some guys that said that weren't passing judgment, and then you had the ones on either camp. And it it uh um it basically I took nothing from it because I couldn't I couldn't discern anything. So um, I was like, oh, I guess we'll just we'll just see when you know one of us get gets it, and I'll talk to people yeah. that actually use it. But uh, the thing that stuck out with me. Um, and we've talked quite a bit about the PlayStation 4 on this site, so I'm excited to talk to you about the Xbox One. But the, the thing that stood out to me was um, people saying that PlayStation 4 is a great console for the year 2013, and the Xbox One has some features that might be from the future. <laughs> yeah. So. That's funny. I hadn't heard that. And I know you were pretty, uh, you were pretty frustrated for the first, like, hours or so that you had the machine oh, trying to get your Jesus. your day one update downloaded but um, well their instructions were really unclear mm-hmm. and i always feel bad giving xbox support a hard time on twitter because they're always really helpful yeah <laughs> and i eventually got it figured out and i was like hey guys listen i'm sorry i'm taking this out on you mm-hmm. like i know you're just trying to help me fix it um but i, I wasn't their instruct you I had to physically download a patch on a USB stick and then do some machinations with the buttons on the machine in order to get to boot from the, the mm. flash drive. Um, and you know once that happened it was a piece of cake and then there's a 650 megabyte um, patch uh, the operating system patch yeah. uh, which is like you know a half an operating system um, that it took I don't know twenty minutes to download or something, but once that happened, it was it went pretty smoothly. Cool. cool. Um, well, we'll get to the yeah. ga- games that a little bit a little bit later. Um, is there anything else headlines wise? Well, I, I, I the one thing that's kind of come up, um, some a couple people I talked with on Twitter really sort of were getting pretty worked up about um, both the machinima and. Is it RPG? They're um, they're supposed to be monetizing people's streams on mm-hmm. uh, YouTube uh-huh. um, and their contracts. And you know, I finally said, "Look, you know, I, I'm happy to look at these because this doesn't sound right to me." Um, but I guess there are some terms that, at least colloquially, don't seem to be legal, mm-hmm. like these this contract with a company in perpetuity or changing the terms of the contract unilaterally when it's actually a negotiated contract. 
Um, is so, this all, I mean, is this all the the copyright claim stuff? Is this all the? No, no, this okay. is separate. The, okay. These are like the the, you know, I don't really know a whole lot about this, but the people like Machinima who mm-hmm. will pay somebody who streams stuff mm-hmm. based on how many views they get and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, but I guess their contracts are pretty pretty onerous. Interesting. It's not yeah. the first time I've heard that, but I'm still sort of looking into it, and it's not something where I read an article about it. It was just sort of word of mouth, and I was like, huh, okay. And I'll um, have to dig into that. I haven't like it's been overshadowed by all the uh, the kind of copyright changes um, and that that have been going on in YouTube in the last couple weeks. Um, but a lot of that is centered around. Um, some of these network sites getting copyright hits that they weren't getting before because uh, Google changed their um, who gets notified for these content ID matches for for copyrighted material, which usually includes gameplay. Um, and it was affecting sites like Machinima, Machinima, but that got me, they did get me kind of thinking that like sites like that that have a network of broadcasters and a network of contributors. Like I've never really even thought through what they're. You know what their contracts look like with those individual channels, and if you're saying it's messed up, that wouldn't surprise me because Machinima was one of those first ones to really kind of jump out in front. So um, I'm sure for a while there, they were the there were people who were just happy to be on the station and probably signed uh, some uh, pretty uh, self defeating contracts. Yeah, I well, uh, one of the guys was like, "Well, I don't want to pay an attorney 150 or 250 dollars up front." I'm like, "Our." Well, <laughs> how much time and money are you losing screwing around? <laughs> um, Let me. But yeah, uh, other than Go ahead. other than that, I mean, the only other thing I've got is the game, the novelist, which I saw when it came up on Kickstarter, and I yeah. kept. I've got a, a snooze where it snoozes a website for like a week, uh huh. And I kept snoozing it, and now it's out and being reviewed, and I'm kind of like, oh man, I, I, I meant to back that. <laughs> I just, oh, so the the, time game, was never the right. game's out, and you meant to kickstart it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, those kickstarters uh, only last like thirty days, man. <laughs> yeah, so I think I hit the snooze for like I don't know two months, three months, something like that. Um, that's funny. I I've actually read a little bit about the novelist, but just got done. At, uh, playing Gone Home, which um has. People yeah. be comparing it to that, um, so I'd be kind of, be curious, really, what you would think of that game uh, if you played through it, through it. And then, uh, um, I don't know. I've so it kind of cooled me on playing the novelist because I, I, I like those interactive stories, but I need to space them out. Yeah, sure. I mean, heck, I had to space out my time with um, Walking Dead season one. Oh, man, I am not emotionally ready to handle season two yet but we'll get there i'm gonna i'm gonna i don't need to play it for the end of the year this year so i'm gonna probably wait till january to jump in there but i still need to play the uh the 900 days expansion first of that so or that chapter so um let's see here i'm gonna go i'm just looking over uh, some headlines that i have marked recently um yeah, I mean, the, like I said, the big story has been YouTube just changing their their copyright, um, well, their content ID scanner to hit more people, and and some channels are getting hit with copyright claims that are just bogus and um, affects a lot of people that make their living off of YouTube. Um, you know that in theory it can it it does kind of affect us, but we don't really necessarily. This is kind of our passion project more so than our job. So yeah, um, but how that stuff shakes out will be will influence a lot of what we can and can't broadcast uh in the future and um not really sure where all that's going there's a um musician that i i like uh who also writes for the escapist magazine and he got a copyright notice takedown from the company on behalf of himself by the company who i don't know does something with publicizing his music so basically, he got a copyright yeah. takedown for stuff he put up from himself. Yeah, there were a couple. There are a couple of those, and it's just like your system is. Oh, and there's also with that one in particular, he had a Twitter exchange with um, the company that claimed it for him. It's whoever like helps him digitally distribute his music. 
Yeah. And uh, it was a pretty humorous, humorous exchange in that they essentially said, he's like, I want everybody to be able to use my music. How can you make that happen? He's like, can you um, write us an email with all the names of all the people that you would like to have the rights to <laughs> use, your, use your music? He's just like, everybody, <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> Yeah, that was that was something else, and I, I was kind of doubly tickled by that because I just sort of randomly found that guy. Uh, Coop had never heard of him, so then I introduced him to Coop, and it's just been uh, it was sort of interesting to be like, oh crap, he writes for the Escapist. I didn't know that. Let's see what else has been going on. Um, apparently, Kevin Smith slammed YouTube in that copyright cl- crackdown. That's headline straight from Polygon. Um, there's got to be something else that's been going on here. Um, did you want to say anything about your your article uh, from earlier this week while I dig through? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm not going to go all the way into it. You can go read the article if you want. Um, but a local news affiliate posted something online about how video games almost killed this guy. Um, long story short, he laid in bed without moving, playing games for like four days straight, um, and got a uh, deep vein thrombosis. So he got clots in his legs and he ignored all the pain and numbness from this for two days. Um, so I kind of took them to task for horrible journalism and, uh, correlation for causation and uh, scare tactics and uh, really haven't gotten a response from them but uh, <laughs> it was uh, like I, I said this at some point but um, the, the source for this article because I never would have found it like reading news on a local website or you know a local TV affiliate website but it was your fiance who just sends me a gchat and says you should run with this. And I looked at it and just responded, oh, fuck. It's still, yeah. Uh, they always take take this, if they can take the spin to attack games, they will they will do that first. Gets those clicks, man. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Cole and I covered quite a bit. We covered the VGXs um, last week. Um, you know, the Walking Dead being back is a bit big news for this week, but really, yeah. as we get get to the end of the year here, there's uh, um, not too much going on. Ridiculous Fishing won um, Apple's App Store Best of 2013 awards. Pretty excited about. I love that game. So, um, and then there's there's a new free to play Star Wars game coming out called Star Wars Attack Squadrons, which you know. We got some starship battles going on, and I want a new Tie Fighter, so I will check that out, even though it won't be anything close to that, <laughs> most likely. Um, and then Nintendo had their they had a Nintendo their Nintendo Direct this this week, and what Doctor Luigi's coming out. Um, they're doing a Legend of Zelda Dynasty Warriors thing, and it's just I don't know, you know Mario Kart Eight. Just Nintendo still just doing their thing, kind of out of touch with everything else that is going on. But, you know, um, I've played a lot of Nintendo in the last six weeks, so I'm still trying to find that thing to latch on to uh, in 2014 for um, for a reason to keep my Wii U um, out of my closet. But um, they didn't show anything this week anyway, so. I, I'm... I- given up like it, it's not like it's too easy of a target it's just i don't <laughs> understand what they're doing anymore and uh it, it was sort of like uh in well super mario sunshine was weird enough as it was but those levels where you would go and then it's like this big rotating thing with sort of lego blocks and uh, i just remember looking at that going this is really weird i love and it there's so much I more like, of that in mario 3d world it's ridiculous yeah, I just feel like that has completely taken over the entire company. I just I don't know what the hell they're doing. All right, let's get let's get to the games. Um, so you got an Xbox One. I did. What I did get on? an Xbox One. What have you been playing on it? Uh, so obviously I got Battlefield Four, um, which 
I like better than Ghosts. I got Ghosts, and the difference between Ghosts and Black Ops 2 is really stark. And I'm... I like the maps better, but I wasn't real sure how I felt about that. Mm-hmm. Um... I do like the Battlefield multiplayer. The Battlefield single player is terrible. Um, the, I mean, the story doesn't even make sense. <laughs> um, I wonder what you would have thought of... Uh, did you play Battlefield 3's single player at all? Cause no. I, I'd heard decent things about Battlefield 4's single player, so... I, it, it, it was okay. It was just... It, yeah, the story made no sense at all. I... I wasn't a big fan of the kind of lack of customization. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, yeah, I got Battlefield 4. Multiplayer's kind of fun. I'm still feeling my way through that because I've never played Battlefield, or yeah, at least so, not back to, like, Battlefield 2. I guess it's a bad time to talk about it since that game's so broken. But, you you know, you kind of got back into Call of Duty in the last two years, I'd say. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, kind of curious, like how you felt about the Battlefield formula having uh, been a bit uh, heavy into Call of Duty. There are things I like about it a lot better. Um, I'm not... I was not real crazy about some of the really cramped, at least in Black Ops 2, some of the really cramped levels Mm -hmm. um, where I was just super fast twitch and it was kind of like... It felt like Goldeneye with Proximity Mines on... um, uh, I can't remember what the level is, but the one where you could uh, on facility. There we go. Yeah, I have nightmares about those levels. Yeah, anything well, involved. You know what I mean? Months. Like people know every play, like every shadow to hide in, and um, so I like the the scope of the maps in Battlefield. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I feel like there's it's a little bit less gimmicky, mm-hmm. but um, I guess I'm sort of like I said, I'm sort of still feeling my way. Okay. And the the Battlefield server system is it's very PC. It's just yeah. not it's not friendly to console <laughs> at all. It's like, hey, here's a list of 75 servers well, well, I've that also have heard, names that don't make any sense. Okay, thanks. I've also heard though that the new consoles and I haven't really tried on the PS4, but they both kind of suck as far as getting a party together and playing with your friends and just getting into games is like, especially compared to the 360. Uh, yeah, I don't, I kind of haven't really dug into it yet. Partly cause I don't know a whole lot of people who have an Xbox one. Um, or at least that I play with. So I don't have a whole lot of comment on that other than some dude jumped into my dead rising three game earlier today and he was trying to give me a teddy bear and <laughs> was just really awesome it was it was great. weird <laughs> he was wearing a uh, lego man head and i didn't know what the hell was going on and i just <laughs> have you zombies ate him. how much dead rising have like how much dead rising have you played before dead rising 3 because that's a it's a quirky uh, fucking I game had the, i had the first one okay Maybe. Um and I played a lot of that. I never played the second one, um, mainly because it sounded cool, and then it was sort of like, "Hey, the building things mechanic is neat," but that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm only mm, three or f- three hours maybe into this one. Um, it's fun. Uh, it's it's Dead Rising. I mean, the map is impressively big. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say about it yet. Okay. Um, it, the building mechanic is neat. Um, I don't think that I have quite the mindset to keep in mind like, oh, I should have this, this, and this all at all times so I can build a. Oh, you mean the weapon that combos? Has... I was like, yeah. Are you building? Yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like, what are you, what so... are you doing? Building buildings and. Well, I mean, like you got. I mean, they've got weapon combos. They've got. They've got vehicle combos. That's where that stuff starts getting nuts. And um, yeah, I mean, I have actually never. I liked what Dead Rising One was doing, but like a lot of its, uh, a lot of how it's it was set up and kind of put me off as far as, um, you know, having that absolute timer and events happening at at certain times, and you just having a limited amount of time in the world, and it just 
it, I just wanted to get out there and kill as many zombies in creative ways as possible, and it sounds like Dead Rising 3 is kind of um, setting the stage to let you do that a little bit more. Like, the uh, you can still kind of do that timed mode, but you have to, you know, you have to choose it from the menu or, like, up your difficulty. So, uh, Dead Rising 3, to me, has just... That has been the only... The closest thing either console has to a console seller. And, uh... But I still think it it was slightly held back a little bit. Yeah, it does have some... Uh... It, it still maintained that story mode. They still have this whole, like, hey, you can restart from the beginning with all your upgrades. Like, hey, if you get to a part that's too hard, like, not like you beat the game and then want to start over. Like, hey, you get to level 7. Not that it's set up in levels, but if you get up to level 7 and it's too hard, just start over, and then you can build your stats up again. And I'm like, really? Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know, just I, it's been fun so far. Like, I, I like combining a steamroller and a sedan and suddenly having, like, a turret on top of my car. That, that makes <laughs> a lot more fun where you can just take down, like, these... Just mow down this highway full of zombies um yeah it, it didn't really strike me as a um i don't know a game that would be completely in your wheelhouse but i was kind of curious what you uh what you'd think so as you play more oh, we'll we'll check in on you um anything else you want to say xbox one wise uh i i downloaded killer instinct and sort of yeah. worked my way through the tutorial yeah just to s- check it out and i was like wait a minute I know you guys gave this to me free, but you want me to pay you twenty bucks for a fighting game? Like I can, I, I can turn the Xbox 360 on and play uh, Street Fighter 2 Alpha or whatever the hell I have. Like this is not. I'm not paying you twenty dollars for this. No matter how, no matter how awesome the nostalgia of Combo Breaker is. I've spent like two hundred dollars on fighting games in the last two years, so you're. 20 bucks sounds like nothing for a new Killer Instinct. Yeah, just, I... I mean, I, I think their their pricing structure's really messed up with, like, buying it per character. Um, but um, did you like, I mean, as far as the presentation and how it felt, did you at least get an opinion of that besides the, the pricing model? Um, not, not, I mean, frankly, not really. Like okay. I said, I only screwed around with the tutorial mode. Okay. Um... It's. I, I don't know how much innovation you do with the with a fighter. You know, the animation seems smooth. It's three high atta- or three punches, three kicks. You know, high and low, and then there's attacks and special attacks and shadow special attacks. Um, which the you know the mechanic that they took from the redone Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Um, oh, where the, like, you have the the, the, the bars, finisher. the power up bars. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I mean, yeah, the, it, it seems <laughs> we're the, like it's like, put. To- we're the like least educated people will be talking about fighting games. I feel like in 2013. Well, yeah, <laughs> we really are. I mean, like if if we wanted to talk, I did just watch the video of the completed. Uh, I think Project M, but that was it. I think if you were at all interested in a fighting game, you need to go back and play Injustice, and I believe. I know that came out for PS4. They might still be released. I almost, bu- I almost bought that. You would like the story and, mode of that game. Well, I will tell you what I bought instead of Injustice. I bought Syndicate. Okay. Let's, let's, I still need to play this game, so tell me how awesome Syndicate no, is. No, you don't. What? Do not. Who are you? Damn it, you ruined my dreams again. Oh, dude. You don't like Syndicate? They, <laughs> they put... The, the weapons and the weapons were okay. Actually, the, no, I take that back. The weapons were pretty good. They they felt solid. Uh, the stories, all right. Um, you know, all the mechanics are there, uh-huh. but they put lens flare on everything. I mean, like you'd be in a dark room and come around a corner, and you're like, just dreading the new I Star Wars trouble. movies, aren't you? You I, you couldn't see anything, like. A light bulb in a room would white out the entire screen. It was you just don't understand together, style. Somebody put together a BuzzFeed of like a hundred different screens where the lens flare, like there, there would be just lens flare syndicate? coming from three directions. Yeah, just for syndicate. Oh wow! It is. Uh, I will. I will have to send you the link. It is. Um, and I will chat. I will post it to you guys too because I know. <laughs> I know who sent it to me. 
it is mind blowing. See, you could it, it was it breaks the game. Okay, wow, that's too bad. I've heard good things about um, from people that it didn't break the game for. <laughs> too bad there's not a toggle for you to see if there's something more to that game for you. Here we go. It's Josh Lee. Oh, Syndicate is permanently set to maximum blooms, <laughs> spelled with a Z. Here we go. Uh... <laughs> Watch a man learn to copy and paste. That's too bad. I, uh... I'm, I'm typing from my phone. That was, that's one of my regrets <laughs> yeah, from this year that I didn't go back and play that. Um, because it, it actually built up some buzz. What I want to say, it was a March 2012 release or like early spring and just kind of one of those game, games they just kind of, you know, they just kind of threw it out there, didn't really market it. And uh, it got some buzz around Game of the Year last year. Just like, did you guys play Are Syndicate? You, you probably should play me? Syndicate. So. There you go. Uh, it it was um, it was something. How much time did you put into it? Like, I mean, I understand if it completely distracted. I played all the way. I played through the entire campaign. Oh, wow. I mean, I didn't, I didn't stop playing. That is a... And a nasty taste in your mouth. That's too bad. That is too bad. I, it, yeah. The campaign was fine. It was sort of, uh, it was, you know, Deus Ex, Human Revolution, made more shooter, mm-hmm. basically. Um, I, I did enjoy making people kill their buddies and then explode. That was fun. Yeah. Huh. Um, Damn it. But yeah, anybody who brought that up in a Game of the Year discussion, uh, somebody should kick him in the nuts <laughs> like absolutely not uh i like that you have strong opinions um is anything anything been making you smile lately uh this is i, I think it's two years old but from z games cthulhu mm-hmm. saves the world i downloaded that shortly after it came out and um I think I was sort of... I had finished Syndicate. I wasn't going to download anything else. I wasn't sure if I was going to buy Ghosts. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll play that. Oh, no, I started playing it when I was downloading Ghosts. <laughs> and um, I was just really, really pleasantly surprised. It is hysterical. Oh, wow. Um, and, and there's... It's very much in the... What's the Final Fantasy for Super Nintendo? Four? I have, uh, well, yeah. Four and four and five, two and three. Let's not get into that. No, it's two and three in Japan. Nobody cares. Um, no six. Yeah, sorry, it, I'm an idiot. Six. It's four and it's five and six. Oh four. god, whatever. Anyway, six is the my six slash three is my favorite. So anyway, it it's a sixteen bit style done RPG. In, <laughs> yeah, that that style of RPG was where I was going with that. But um, Cthulhu is hysterical. I need like he's something really, really funny else to build up our credibility. This show, I feel like we've been tripping all over ourselves from talking fighting games and talking Final Fantasy numbers. But um, yeah, Z Boyd ended up going on to do the uh, the Penny Arcade games uh, for chapters three and four of that. Um, mm-hmm. And they they've they had I forget their their other game, but they they've really kind of nailed that 16-bit uh, JRPG style. Um, I'll be curious to see where they keep going, but I've only heard great things about Cthulhu, Saves the World, but didn't had no idea it was supposed to be that funny. So that's kind of... It it's out. right up my alley in terms of like humor. Like, um, There's one point where the first person who joins your party is this girl, and you rescue her, and... She's like, oh, you wouldn't do that. And he's like, what, are you kidding me? You're not that pretty. <laughs> um, um, and you're playing Ask yeah. Cthulhu, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's the leader of your party. That's funny. Um, now tell me about ghosts. Mr. Mr. Call of Duty, tell me about ghosts. Uh, the, And I'm saying this with the... Well, first of all, sorry, did, that, did you get on 360? Is that what? Yeah, I got it on 360. Okay. I am not going to get it on. I'm not upgrading. <laughs> okay. Um, the storyline for this one, it, I mean, I liked the story in Black Ops 2. That was pretty cool. I liked the dual storylines. I liked what was going on. Ghost's... Pardon me. Mm-hmm. Ghost's storyline is almost as dumb as Battlefield 4. 
Um, That's not a compliment. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. I guess I just really like Black Ops too. Um, but the I don't know exactly what it is. They changed some of the mechanics um, between Black Ops Two and Ghosts, and I think it's just the difference between Treyarch and Infinity Ward. Uh, Infinity Ward. Um, the style. Mm-hmm. I guess I like Treyarchs better, um, you know, having compared the two of them. Um, but the levels, I think that they must have taken a hint from Battlefield 3 because the multiplayer levels are much bigger. Hmm. Um, and I like them. That, that was fun. So are you sticking but with they're... Ghost multiplayer or do you, do you still play quite a bit Black Ops 2? I have not gone back to Black Ops okay. 2 since I got Ghosts. Um, my KD ratio is actually higher on Ghosts than Black Ops, but <laughs> was it? There was, I think it was. Um, and I saw. I apologize to keep bringing this up because I know you have uh, uh, strong feelings about Penny Arcade, but there was a Penny Arcade cartoon, uh, their comic, which I still really enjoy. Um, yeah, they about the guys playing Call of Duty Ghosts and talking about their. Uh, KD ratios and just how how great everything is and then hitting the realization that hey uh, the teenagers they have to wait till Christmas until they get their their new Xbox Ones so you're playing against a bunch of other dads right now is that <laughs> so, yeah that, that actually might be it <laughs> that, that might totally sum it up um, so yeah I mean so far it's early um I like the Xbox One. I think I like the controller better. Mm-hmm. Um, it is. Are a you using the voice egg. stuff? And have you messed with the TV uh, stuff? I use it. I use it to turn on. I'm not gonna screw around the TV stuff just yep. because I've heard it's. I think it's too early. I think they've yeah. got to. They're they they're gonna figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I use the voice stuff sort of navigating. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously when I'm like watching, uh, ne- you know, Netflix or Amazon. Um, it is a big honking piece of machinery. Mm. It's much lighter, but it is at least as big as the original Xbox. Yeah. That's, that surprised me. I was like, good Lord. <laughs> I heard those Xboxes uh, are big. Um, the only other thing mm-hmm. about it is that I quickly realized is this is the input for the mic. Yeah. Which renders my nice Turtle Beach surround sound headphones that I bought for my 360 completely worthless. Yeah. Does that Was that news to you? I'm sorry if it was. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I never a lot really of, like, looked into it, and I was just like, when I got ready to plug them in, I was like, oh, son of a... Yep. That stuff's so, gonna... We're gonna have to rebuy a lot of things for the next gen. So, Sony's not any better with that, with that stuff either. Um... Let's see, uh, but let's. So we're we're warming up for our Grimmies uh, Game of the Year awards, and we're gonna shoot out some uh, some of our personal uh, best of the year lists leading up to that. I was kind of curious as to where your your head is looking back on the on 2013. What's kind of standing out to you now that you've kind of sort of scanning through your highlights? Well, the, the thing that stands out the most to me is the fact that I have still not played Bioshock Infinite. Um, that bothers me. Maybe, I, frankly, maybe I should have told you to do that on your way to pick up your Xbox. Like, take care of some unfinished business first. That Xbox, well, Xbox One I isn't going. I bought anywhere. the Xbox One with money from a bonus that I wasn't expecting. But wasn't so I? I'm still getting these Amazon gift cards. Uh huh. Uh, which were supposed to uh, supplement my Xbox buying power. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'll just. But didn't you, know, you avoid getting Bioshock Infinite due to some sort of budget freeze at the time of its release? Was that accurate? Uh, at the time of its release, yeah. No, that's completely accurate. So, uh, I'm just saying. Um, looking at some of your recent decisions related to. I don't know, Syndicate and Ghosts that uh, um, you might have made a few mistakes this year. I, <laughs> I, It's possible I made some mistakes. <laughs> I don't know why I got Ghosts instead of um, 
Bioshock. I, I re- really don't. A reflex purchase. I think totally it was on the. It. Um, I left my list of all the games I played for this year. Um, I, I in general, I'm still gonna have to stick with uh, not necessarily doing a top ten list of 2013 yeah. because I played some games from 2012. Uh, I didn't play all of the big, the big releases, or even all of the big and medium releases. Um, you know, my big win for this year was Saints Row Four, yeah. which continues to blow my freaking mind. That's awesome. Like uh, those guys, there's something wrong with <laughs> the guys at Deep, that the guys at Deep Silver. Like they're they're just they're my kind of wrong. Yeah. Um, that. The, the scene where you climb the rocket ship and don't want to miss a thing was playing. The intro. I, I lost it. You know, yeah, at the, at the intro, I lost it and, like, <laughs> and dying laughing and run upstairs and tell my wife, who's not a, you know, uh, well, that kind of gamer. Uh, and sh- she thought it was hysterical. So. so I have some good news. We're both from the Midwest. If you would ever like to Pay, pay the developers volition a visit. They're just up in Chicago. They're like one of the like beacons of great game development light from the Midwest. Um, and uh, I'm sure I was uh, going to relax this weekend, but screw that. Let's go to Chicago. <laughs> go stumble around and go drinking with the volition guys. But um, but yeah, I think they found a good home. At so uh, volition had a pretty rough last couple of years with the THQ buyout and I think Deep Silver has given them a given them at least a home where they can continue to, to uh, do develop their own kind of crazy. So that that was yeah. nice to see that um land safely still be Saints Row. I still contend that that game is an expansion pack, but it's the best expansion pack. So um I will I'll be curious to see when when and how they revisit Saints Row from here on out. Well, and I've I've still got to play uh, the the Saint Save Christmas. Yeah, there's uh, I think there's what three I think there's three bits of DLC out there now. There's the Dominatrix yeah. one, and I thought there was another one. Like they haven't been all that great, but you add them all up, there there plenty more Saints Row stuff if you're into that. Yeah, and the um, there, I have a list of games I should have bought instead of. Um, <laughs> I should have bought Far Cry 3 just to play Blood Dragon. Mm-hmm. I mean... Um, I think you can do that, it standalone, honestly. Happened. I think... I could be wrong there, but I think you can buy Blood Dragon standalone. And then... Um, yeah, I, I know, but I want to shoot sharks. Yeah. Um, guilt-free. You have um, still not been way, been swayed to kill sharks on the open sea of Pirate's Creed, have you? No. Let me let me just tell you one thing about <laughs> So I've been playing I've been playing Black Flag and it just becomes readily apparent that you know the some creative minds from the Far Cry th- 3 team were able to influence this game just from the way that the hunting is set up in this world and broken down into very similar uh, fashions that Far Cry 3 is and that you have to you know you you go around you find out where the different animals are they kind of move around in the world you kill a couple of them, skin them, use that to upgrade your gear. Um, but you have to kill and harpoon uh, very, very large ocean creatures, uh, which entails basically driving your boat into an area where you see that there are bull sharks or whatever they happen to be. Does a quick cut scene where your where your captain takes his shirt off and gets into a rowboat, and then they go out with harpoons in this rowboat, and you track down this shark, throw a harpoon in the shark, and that starts just pulling your boat through the ocean while you're trying to kill it by throwing more harpoons at it. And if it breaks free, it'll come back and basically try to attack your boat, and you have this moment where you can still kill the shark, but he's also going to jump up and eat you if you miss. <laughs> and that is my pitch for Pirate's Creed 4. I, I I feel like I could just, you know... Wait till Big Game Hunter, Pirates of the yeah whatever ocean yeah whatever Ubisoft they have to spin this off they have to like 
break it out of Assassin's Creed because they just spent so much time developing this incredible, you know, open open ocean sandbox, <laughs> and um, it's kind of limited by its Assassin's Creedness. And uh, and but once you get out there, man, that is that's some of my favorite some of my favorite gaming of the year. I'm just saying. Wow, I mean that's that's strong praise. Yeah. Um. Any other regrets Sorry, I, standing out or uh, any highlights? other regrets? I'm trying to think. I don't think I have any other big regrets from this year. Uh, oh, that's a lie. <laughs> um, there was Aliens Colonial Marines. Yeah, I'm sorry for you. You you probably uh, got hurt the most personally out of that out of our crew. Oh, God. well, you and Josh were pretty pretty invested. That was, that I didn't was just I didn't so see bad. what you guys were seeing. I was just like, oh, you know, I like an Aliens game, but ugh. oh, that was. That I think was we should make pain. a rule where we're not allowed to bring that game up after this year. We should get through I'm, these. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it was. Oh, um. Yeah, so I have this stack of games just chilling out down here that I'm kind of looking at. Um, um, I mean, you were you were yeah. if you were browsing around playing Cthulhu Saves the World, was there there was there any other like indie games or smaller games that stood out to you, good or bad? Uh, I recently downloaded Power Up. Um, I don't know that one. Which I'm I can't remember who I saw review it. It might have been an indie gamer chick. Mm-hmm. But I may not be right on that. It's a pretty straightforward, um, like side-scrolling Gradius style game. Oh, yeah. Um, it's but it's you already have the ability to shoot in any direction, like you know, the up and down and shooting forward and backward and I don't know spread or something like that. But you just power all those weapons up. It's not like you have to get one and then change to it. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a neat mechanic. It's not super hard, but it's hard enough. Um, mm. You know, and for two bucks or whatever the hell I paid for it, uh, totally worth it. So, yeah, Power Up was fun. Um, I still haven't figured out, I, I still haven't seen the end of Clementine, or not the end of Clementine, but what happens at the end of. Um, Season one of The Walking Dead because I know something emotionally bad happens and I at Dude, the time I was like I can't handle you, this. I'm not I'm not emotionally ready to step into season two. Like I've been through some shit this year with video games and I would <laughs> it started with The Walking Dead last year but like I'm like either games just beating me up emotionally or just or just messing with my head you know um, I do think that. You should take some time and play Brothers if you haven't. That would be one of the smaller ones I would recommend for you. Um, I want to do Brothers. I want to do um, the one that just came out, the the fairy tale one. The Telltale. Oh, the, the, the Wolf Among Us. Wolf Among Us, yes. yeah. I highly recommend that. that. We decided that that and The Walking Dead, since they're not going to finish until next year, they're not they're not in our Games of the Year discussion. So, But gotcha. yeah, that... For great first chapter of that game, I think you'd definitely enjoy that. Um, Brothers has been the big one that I've been because it's only like a three-hour game. I'll be just like everybody mm. kind of needs to play that. Um, and um, it's a shame that the the Last of Us is locked away as a PlayStation Three exclusive because more people should play that game. Um, that put me through some shit. Um, yeah, I was just I was a wreck during that game. Um, because this this last half of the year, I was playing catch up, and the recurring phrase that I kept using during our my live streams was "fuck you, video game." Because it was just like, it was just, it it, it just kept putting me through a lot. And I love I love and emotionally hate it scarred by games. God, pretty close. Pretty close. It was it was rough. Um, the uh, when I don't know. Yeah, you're aware of this. I played through uh, both uh, Uncharted 1 and 2, speaking of uh, playing catch-up. Mm-hmm. So that was an interesting experience. Now, what what else emotionally scarred 
you this year. Um, with brothers, Clementine brothers, the last, last of us, Bioshock really messed with me too. Um, kind of in a different way than those. Um, and then I played, you know, I played a bunch of horror games. Um, Outlast and Amnesia were both they, they both messed with me. Um, and I'm trying to think what else is out there. Luckily, I was playing the le- the new Legend of Zelda game during all this, and that helped uh, make me smile at least. Um, but it was just yeah. like I don't know that with the Last of Us in particular, like there was a dread of playing the game, but it wasn't. But it was also super enjoyable because of it. It was just like, yeah, God, I want this game to end, but please never end. <laughs> it was it was just a constant uh, a constant battle, um, and then. Um, so it's it's gonna be tough for me to like. There's a lot of games that had a lot of resonance with me, but also then comparing those to oh, and then I think right before that I beat Tomb Raider and they just beat up on Laura the entire time. Um, that's yeah. hard, that's hard to watch, but also kind of vindicating. Um, but it's just uh, I don't know. And then I've got like pure fun experiences like Devil May Cry and just like at comparing those experiences. There's just some. There's a lot more games that kind of poked at you emotionally that I was, than I was um, anticipating. And I, I tend to gravitate towards those games. So, and they tend to leave like a lasting memory and it's making sense of, does that make them a great game or is it just kind of like a great story? And so that's what mm-hmm. I'll be kind of struggling with, with my, with my personal list and then try to sort that out to make some sort of argument for um, some of these games for, for grimmier awards. But um, yeah, this this is gonna be an interesting year because I, I, you know, I played more multiplayer than before, which took up time. <laughs> yeah. So I got I got, you know, it was twenty five games this year instead of thirty one from last year. Um. And on top of that, uh, there were <clears throat> there were some of the like Xbox Live arcade games that, um were longer experiences than I, I think had been in the past. Like, I think that that sort of really hit maturity um, this year. I just feel like this year doesn't have a runaway favorite or a runaway, a, a standout, just like perfect game. Uh, but there are a lot of great games. Mm-hmm. And um, it's going to come down to a lot of personal preference and... Uh, be really curious to see where we end up. We ended up in a place I didn't expect last year, uh, with with Mass Effect three taking it home. So, um, oh, I don't really yeah. have a, I don't really have um, any predictions because I I haven't done my own my own list yet either, and I'm still trying to fit in a few more a few more indie games uh, before the year gets out. I'm gonna play the play the Swapper. I think that's up next, and then Mag Runner is still out there. Uh, that's another like. It's another Cthulhu reference game, just so, just in case you were curious. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's Wait, been a which fun. One year. Is... Hmm? Mag Runner. Wh- which one? Mag Runner is a Cthulhu reference. It's got yeah, it's got like Cthulhu lore in it, but it's kind of futuristic at the same time. So huh. yeah, I have to check that out. <laughs> and then Jordan in chat is kind of reminding me that. I'm going to also have a separate list of my favorite games to 2013 that had nothing to do with being in 2013. Like, cause I really, I mean, I played a bunch of earthbound and wind waker and, um, and lots of Skyrim and just, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of games that had nothing to do with this year that I sank a lot of time into. So, um, yeah, I'm anxious to, I'm anxious to just sit down and sort this out. And then fight it out with the rest of our crew. So, uh, yeah, this this should be an interesting year, I think. Um, um, I will say that I think that hands down best expansion pack this year was for Mass Effect Three. I think the Citadel expansion pack was outstanding. Oh, I I don't think I ever went back to play it. So, oh, it's really cool. Um, I've heard good things about. Uh, the XCOM expansion, Blood Dragon sitting out there, um, Burial at Sea for Bioshock got some rough reviews. Uh, mm. I'm trying to think what else stands out from that expansion side, but um, you know, Borderlands Two just keeps releasing stuff. <laughs> um, 
if they had to do best quantity of DLC, that might win the award. Um, I mean, they still clog up my Twitter feed. Yeah. I'm just like, dude, okay. All right. I think, you know, I think that's going to do it for for tonight. But I feel like I know where your head's at. We're going to get to voting here behind the scenes, and then um, we'll figure out if we can't uh, get you to drop in on our, our Grimmies podcast. We're still kind of sorting out those details, seeing who's who's available, who's got the games to talk about, and that kind of thing. So, I'm, will... Shit, I'm glad you know where my head's at, because I... <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I wrote an introductory paragraph for my Grimmies and I was, or for my games, and I was like, uh, <laughs> "Okay, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this." And for everybody else, be uh, be safe out there. The Steam sale started, so um, <laughs> I think the next podcast you're gonna catch all of us on is our uh, game of the year discussion, which uh, will act will be happening. The first weekend of January, we'll put more details up on the site, but it's going to be six, eight, ten hours straight of going through all of our Grammy Awards and, and uh, fighting it out to see who gets the, the game of the year. So we're looking forward to it. We'll see you then. Catch you next time. <laughs>